Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and in this video, I'm going to be answering a question from the International GCSE Complete Mathematics David Rayner um, Extended um, Book. And this question is about vectors. It's exercise 10 on page 304, question 9. Here we're told that M is the midpoint of AC and N is the midpoint of OB and the vector from O to A is called the vector A and the vector from point O to point B is called the vector B and the vector from O to C is called the vector C. Express A to B in terms of A and B. So part A is express the vector from A to B in terms of the vector A and the vector B. So if I want to go from the point A to the point B, I have to go uh, along the vector from O to A to O, which is minus A, and then from O to B, which is the vector B. So if I want to go from A to B, according to the vectors that I have here, I've got to go from A to O. I've got to start at A, so I've got to go from A to O, and then I've got to go from A, from O to B. Okay, so A to O is like the vector A, but the same length, but in the opposite direction. It's parallel to it, so it's minus A, and the vector B, uh, from O to B is exactly the vector B. O to B is equal to B. So that's going to be minus A plus B, which I can write as the vector B minus A. Both of them are the same. That's fine for part A. Then it says for part B, express O to N in terms of B. So O to N. O to N is a half of O to B. Okay, so I can write here O to N. We can see O to N is equal to a half of O to B. Okay, N is a midpoint of OB, as they told us here. So that's going to be a half of the vector B. O to B is a vector B. So there's the answer for part B. O to N is equal to a half of B. Okay, then part C says express the vector from A to C in terms of A and C. Okay, the vector from A to C in terms of A and C. And we can see very clearly, if I want to go from A to C, I've got to go from A to O, and then from O to C. So if I want to go from A to C, I have to go first from A to O, and then from O to C. So from A to O is negative A, so it's minus A, and from O to C is plus C. So I can write that as C minus A if I want. Both of them are correct. That's the vector from A to C. Now I've got to find, it says express A to M. A to M. A to M is from A to the midpoint of AC. So it's halfway between A and C. So A to M, you can say, is same as a vector, a half of the vector A to C. And I already know what the vector A to C is. It's this vector here. So it's a half times C minus A, which I can write as a half C minus a half A if I wish to. Okay, so that's part D. Now we've got to do part E where it says express O to M. O to M in terms of A and C. Now if I want to go from O to M, well, I already know O to A and I already know A to M. So I can combine them. So I've just found A to M. I know O to A is A. So if I go from O to A, so if I go from O to A, so O to M is going to be O to A plus A to M. Okay, that will take me from O to M. O to A plus A to M. I know O to A is the vector A, and I know A to M is what I just found in part D, which is a half C minus a half A. A half C minus a half A. I can't leave it like this because it's not simplified. I've got like terms. So I'm going to have A minus a half A, which is a half A. So I'm left with a half A plus a half C. That's part E. Okay, almost there. We got to, to part uh, G to do. Okay, so part F says express N to M in terms of A, B, and C. Okay, let's just bring this down here so we can see what we're doing. So it says express N to M in terms of A, B, and C. Now, N to M is this little bit. You're going to go from here to there. Now, what we can do here, um, it's a bit awkward going from here to this point. So what we'll do is I know if I want to go from N to M, if I want to go from N to M, I can think about it like, let's go all the way back to O again. So that's N to O. 
because I know how to go from N to O. It's minus a half of B. And then I can go from O to M. So N to O and then O to M. And I'll get from N to M. It's a bit of a long route, but that's fine. So N to O is minus B. M plus, sorry, O to M. See, because I already have O to M in the previous question. And I know how to get from N to O. So if we go from N to O and then from O to M, I'll get that. So N to O is a vector minus a half B. It's, a, it's, it's like a half of the size of the vector B in the opposite direction. And O to M is what I just found in the previous question, which is a half A plus a half C. So there's our answer. I can, I can write it a bit neater, like I can say a half A plus um, or minus a half B, just in order if you want, it's no problem. Minus a half B plus a half C. Either of those is fine. Okay, that's the answer to part F. Now, part G is a question that was actually asked. That's the question that the student wanted me to explain. So I wanted to just, you know, build up the question. These vector questions, one part leads on to the other. So it's always good to answer the whole thing. So part G, it says here, if N and M coincide, it means if N and M are the same point, they're in the same point, they coincide. Write down an, an equation connecting A, B, and C. Well, if N and M coincide, if N and M basically are on the same, the same point, coincide, that means the vector taking you from N to M must be equal to zero because you're not going anywhere, right? They're the same point. So if you found the vector N to M, that vector must be equal to zero if they're the same point because, you know, the vector will take you nowhere at the end. You'll end up going back to where you started. Okay, so that means a half A minus a half B plus a half C is equal to zero. You could leave your answer like that, and that would be fine, because I didn't tell you how to write your answer. However, um, you could simplify this. It's an equation. You can multiply both sides of the equation by two. No problem. It will still be the, you know, the same equation. The equation, you can multiply both sides, divide both sides by the same number, and it's still the same equation. So here what I can do, just to get rid of the common factor of two, if I multiply everything by two, I have A minus B plus c equals zero. You can leave your answer like that. That's perfectly fine. If you want to write it as a plus c equals b, you can write it like that, any combination of these. So this is correct, this is correct, this is correct. They didn't tell us how to write our answer, in what form to write our answer. So we could write it in any one of these forms as we wish. Okay, I think in the, ba in the back of the book it's got something like that. Okay, but any of these forms would be perfectly fine um, to write your answer for this question. So there we have the answer to this question number nine from uh, exercise 10. Um, thank you for watching. Other questions which are related to vectors from this book will be in this, uh, in this uh, playlist that will appear over here. And over here you will have other, vector, other vectors questions from IGCSE. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top of the page, you would have seen a card appearing which takes you to a past paper um, IGCC past paper quest, uh, um, past paper playlist. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.